What are you hearing and how seriously should we take some of these considerations? Yeah, thank you for having me. So what I'm hearing is Apple is looking at all sorts of new wearable devices uh, to augment the AirPods and the Vision Pro and the Apple Watch. One thing they looked at a few years ago was a smart ring, similar to what Samsung introduced uh, formally this week, but I don't actually believe the smart ring is currently still in development or something that Apple is planning uh, at this point to bring to market. But more interestingly, are how they can blend AR and AI into new head-worn AR devices, right? And so one consideration is smart glasses, not uh, AR glasses, but smart glasses with clear lenses, but that use special speakers and external cameras that use AI, right? And voice control, the cameras can see what you're looking at. And then you can use your voice uh, to help understand your surroundings. You can use your voice sort of like you normally would with, with Siri, and they would be a sort of upgraded type of AirPods with better battery life and new sensors. The other thing they're looking at is simply adding that same technology into AirPods. So having AirPods with cameras in it uh, so they could identify your surroundings and you can use all sorts of AI and AR features with that uh, to really have a better understanding of the world around you. Now, ultimately, like I said, I don't think the ring is gonna come to market. I do believe the AirPods will get cameras and additional sensors, however, one day. And I do believe they're taking a very close look if they're going to release sort of non-AR display glasses as a stepping stone to those eventually coming out probably five years from now. So, Mark, do they complement the iPhone or replace it? Yeah, I think all these products are complementary products to the iPhone. I think there was a lot of discussion a few years ago about the idea of augmented reality glasses replacing the iPhone. Uh, my take on that has changed. I don't necessarily think the iPhone is going to go anywhere. Just like people thought that iPads and, and bigger smartphones would cannibalize laptops, right? Laptops have gone absolutely nowhere. But will they change in form factor? Will the phone eventually become the laptop? I think that everyone is going to still carry phones for decades to come. You still need that sort of main device. You need that product with that bigger display. But AR glasses will eventually arrive to augment that. I think the bigger shift uh, is going to be from perhaps the watch or the ring that some people are doing to more of those head-worn portable products. I'm just sitting here trying to imagine a world where people are even more distracted and separated from other people in the reality, and then instead kind of communicating with them in some sort of technological or metaverse, if you will, uh, that's been left for dead. I mean, is that the reality that we're talking about? One, some people were talking about the idea that some of these wearables would replace the need to be glued to a screen, but you're saying that's not it at all. This is just another way to reach the metaverse. Yeah, you know, I don't think the metaverse uh, is influenced here. I don't think this has much to do with the metaverse. I think that the ultimate vision are these augmented reality glasses. This won't be in the next two years. This won't be under $1,500. This is going to be five years from now uh, and very expensive. The idea uh, being that you're getting all that information you normally get on an Apple Watch into your field of view. And I think there's room for, for multiple products, right? I think there's room for the Vision Pro at home as sort of a uh, entertainment and content consumption device, maybe as a computer replacement, right? I think that's a very viable uh, situation. And then on the go, right, instead of normally using your Apple Watch as you're out and about, you have those augmented reality glasses. You can use them to do your music playback. You can use them to do your voice control, your text messages, your phone calls, all on the go, things you normally use uh, for a phone as you're walking down the street uh, or you're walking amongst the office, right? Uh, whereas maybe you would use the phone when you're sitting down for a little bit more complex task. And if you want to get real work done, maybe you're using uh, a Vision Pro or an iPad or a laptop or some such. But the big idea is that all of these products need to work together and integrate. And Apple is not going to let each product cannibalize each other. They're going to leave room for the products to work better together because they technically want consumers to own everything. They don't want you to choose between one product or another. They want you to have a watch on your wrist glasses on your face, a phone in your pocket, right? A Vision Pro at home to do more, a laptop to do even more than that, maybe an iPad for the airplane. Well, if you're buying the glasses, why would you need to buy the Vision Pro? Is it that much, would it be that much better? 
Well, there would be different use cases, right? Uh, the glasses would be an augmented reality only product. It wouldn't be all encompassing. It wouldn't be extraordinarily immersive like the Vision Pro is, right? So if you need to sit down uh, to watch a movie, you're going to want to use a Vision Pro versus AR glasses. Uh, the other thing is, is computing performance, right? The glasses will have enough performance that has to balance enough to have proper battery life, right? So you would wear those throughout the day. But if you want to get real work done, you need better performance to do photo editing or video editing or to watch a 3D movie, you're going to need the Vision Pro. So they are two distinct products. And Mark, as you know, Tim Cook and Mark Zuckerberg are hardly best of friends. Do you see Meta and Apple being bigger competitors with each other in the years to come? Absolutely. I think that Meta has taken sort of the Android and the Google role uh, in this, you know, XR world. You know, Android has uh, not shown their XR version yet. I expect them to do that this year uh, at the earliest by next year and the beginning of next year at the very latest. Uh, but certainly, you know, the big approach that Meta should be taking is looking to license uh, some of their hardware patents, some of their expertise, some of their operating system uh, to third parties and get the, the meta operating system and meta services and platform onto as many third party devices as possible, just like Android did uh, with their with their smartphone approach. And Apple is going to continue to release their own first party devices and create everything, you know, in house. So, yeah, I certainly see them uh, in a battle for years to come. Meta is way closer than Apple to bringing AR glasses to market. Uh, Apple is probably five years uh, you know, from now. But the reality is you need to balance high quality displays, uh, processing performance and battery life, and that takes time. And Meta has simply just you know, been uh, at this a little bit longer and more extensively than Apple. Uh, Apple, obviously their headset launched a decade nearly after Oculus, which Meta acquired to build its Quest devices. So yeah. uh, but at the same time, Apple's done pretty well for a first generation product. There's two dimensions to this story that I'd love to continue discussing. One I know Lisa's interested in, and it's data, how Apple manages that story against, say, a Meta. The other one, and you alluded to it, Mark, what has happened to Google as a company, to Alphabet? Why aren't they at the forefront of these conversations in a way that we would have imagined they would be a few years ago? Yeah, the Google question is certainly an interesting one. It is a head scratcher. They had uh, such a stronghold over the smartphone market with Android, and it is a, a big, colossal failure for, for Google. I think that they completely missed the boat on an augmented reality or virtual reality or mixed reality operating system. They worked on it for many years. Uh, they were really at the forefront of this, but they've really missed out. What they really needed to do was sort of create this XR equivalent to Android and license it to as many headset makers as possible. Uh, right now, they're working with Samsung on a mixed reality headset for release, I believe, early 2025 that they believe will compete with the Vision Pro. Uh, but at this point, I think it's too little too late. Uh, their best bet, and I don't anticipate this necessarily happening, is figuring out a way to partner with uh, Meta and going ah. in it together with Meta because they are so behind uh, at this point. Now, one fun fact is that the Meta XR operating system is based on Android. So a lot of the underpinnings are there. It's just about how uh, they decide to bring such a partnership uh, to market. And in terms of data collection, the, the interesting thing about Apple is that what you're seeing on the device is, is kept on the device, whereas we're not sure how Meta is handling that data.